Hi everyone. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a vibration and resonance analysis of the Shendrones Sicario. It's an X8 seven inch Cinelifter designed to carry something like a DSLR or maybe a red Komodo camera. Uh, this all started because Alex, who has a YouTube channel at Design Tune Operate that I'll, I'll link in the video description, reached out to me because he was having some vibration issues with his Shendrone Sicario and he wondered if I might be able to help. I was really keen to take a look at a larger quad and see if what I've been learning about smaller quads like five inch freestyle drones really applied to these larger Cinelifter category drones. So I was fortunate enough to be able to collaborate with Andy Shen, the designer of the Shendrone Sicario and lots of other great frames and Alex to dig into what was causing this strange vibration behavior and how to fix it. So let me tell you what I found out. For those of you who followed me for a while, you'll know how this works. But for those of you who might be new, Andy Shen, the designer of the Sicario, was kind enough to provide me with the CAD of the frame for this analysis. And that information gives me as close to a perfect representation of the geometry of the frame as it's possible to get. I used the CAD that he provided along with models that I've developed for the materials used in drone frame construction to build a finite element model of the quad. And I always get asked in the comments, do your material models take into account the fact that carbon fiber is a composite material with fibers oriented in different directions? And the answer is yes, it's a fully anisotropic material model of carbon fiber. And I can simulate, in fact, any type of layup of carbon fiber that might be used. In this case, it's all plain weave carbon fiber. Alex at Design Tune Operate provided the black box logs from his Sicario to show the kind of problems that he was facing when he was trying to tune the drone. And I compare the results of the simulation against the black box logs to validate them. And then I show you the results. So this is going to be a really focused targeted analysis because Alex has identified a specific vibration issue with his Sicario. And we're going to be looking to see if we can identify what's causing that and perhaps look at ways in which we can improve the performance of the design to solve the problem. So this is the gyro scaled black box log for the roll axis of Alex's Shendrone Sicario. And we can see that it looks uh, a little noisy compared to what we might expect for something like a five inch freestyle drone. And that is not uncommon at all. As you get to larger props, seven, eight, even 10 inch diameter props, the balance of the prop is never quite as good. It's impossible to get a seven inch prop as well balanced as a five inch prop. And so they do generate more vibration. And we can see that here in this large peak of motor noise. And this is not something that typically we need to worry about at all. This is um, perfectly normal for a larger drone like this and it's not going to be causing the vibration issues that Alex has identified. If we look now at the D term on the roll axis, so this is after all of the filtering that's applied on the D term, we can see that there's this really noticeable spike in the D term at just about 70 hertz. And this spike in the D term spectrograph is the real enemy here, because this type of noise will really limit the maximum D gain and therefore the overall tune of the drone. And also it could potentially cause D term oscillations at that frequency of 70 Hertz if there isn't sufficient filtering on the on the D term and if the D gains are too high. It's really important to remember here that big quads like these Cinelifter quads need much more D term than five inch freestyle drones to fly well as a proportion of the P term. So the P to D ratio is much more weighted in favor of D for large drones like the Sicario. So this is very clearly a source of potential vibration issues with this particular drone. So let's look now at the pitch axis. And the first thing we can see is that pitch is a lot more well behaved than roll for this particular drone. And this is not particularly surprising 
given that the moment of inertia of the Sicario is very much greater on pitch than on roll and more moment of inertia reduces the size, the amplitude of vibrations on the pitch axis for a given energy of vibration. So we see a smaller amplitude and therefore less noise in the gyro signal. Again, you know, there are there is some motor noise here. There are some motor vibrations that are coming through on the gyro scaled log, which is not surprising. And there's also a sign of a vibration just around maybe 60 hertz on the pitch axis. If we look now at the D-term, we can see that, that the D-term amplifies that tiny peak that we saw in the gyro scaled log to be quite a significant peak. And we can really notice this now, and although it's nowhere near as bad as what we saw on the roll axis, it could still potentially um, cause D-term oscillations hot motors um, and limit the maximum D gain that you can put on the drone. So it's something we would like to address if we possibly can. And finally, let's look at the yaw axis. Again, this is the gyro scaled log for the yaw axis. Now yaw is interesting because it doesn't have a D term. So in that sense, it's a lot less sensitive to noise because the D term is what really amplifies and is very sensitive to gyro noise. We still see some vibration on the yaw axis, although it is the cleanest of the three axes. And again, we do see some evidence of this 70 hertz, approximately 70 hertz uh, resonance here, which you know could, could cause some problems, but certainly not on the yaw axis because, as I said, there's no D term here. So because we now know that we need to look at around 70 hertz to find this vibration, I conducted a harmonic analysis of the Shendrone Sicario. And what this does is it uses simulation methods to work out what all the resonant frequencies and all the resonant mode shapes of the frame are. And then it can combine all those resonant modes together at any frequency that you want to look at in order to work out what the response of the drone will look like, how the drone is going to vibrate at that particular frequency when it's excited by the out of balanceness of the props and the motors. So the, the motors are going to excite this frequency, 74 hertz, and the harmonic analysis shows us exactly how the drone is moving. So we can see immediately that the drone is yawing from the left and to the right and the motors are waggling on the ends of the arms all together to the left and then all back to the right or i should really say they're all moving clockwise and then counterclockwise because they're all rotating around the center of the drone so this is the vibration mode that's causing alex the problem with his shendrone sicario it's vibrating in this way while it's in the air and that's creating some difficulty with his tune. Now, although this is only one data point, I think it's important to mention that I have looked at all the resonant modes and frequencies of the simulation and compared them really carefully to the black box logs. And I found that I get an agreement in frequency of a little bit less than 5% for, for each of the modes. And so I'm really confident with that kind of agreement that the simulation is an accurate representation of what's going on with the drone in the air and that we can use the simulation to help identify ways in which we can improve the design. So Alex contacted Andy Shen, the designer, about this particular vibration problem. And the first thing that Andy suggested, and it's a really good idea, is to try adding arm braces. So these are lengths of material that connect the front and rear motors. And on many frame designs, adding these types of braces between the arms can really help address some of the vibrational issues. So here we're looking at a gyro scaled black box log and uh, the D term, both on the roll axis for a flight with these arm braces added to the drone. And what we can see is that there is perhaps a small improvement in this small resonant peak here. This could be due to differences in the two flights. But when we look at the D term, we see that it's still very much present. 
And so it's still going to be limiting the performance of, uh, of the drone in two ways. It's going to be limiting the amount of filtering that you can get away with and therefore things like prop wash handling. And it's also going to be limiting the maximum degain that can be applied and therefore the overall responsiveness of the tune. So here are the results of a harmonic analysis with these arm braces added. And what you can see is that the nature of the vibration has changed in some ways, but stayed the same in other ways. So now, rather than all the motors moving together, first clockwise and then anti-clockwise, we now see that the braces have linked the left and right arms together. So now they move forward and back together. And in fact, they, we see that both the left and the right arms move forward together and back together. But you can see as well that we've still got that same flex in the arms with the motors moving forward and back. And that the amplitude of the vibration has been reduced slightly, but it's not been completely eliminated by the braces. So this is the point where Alex got in touch with me and asked me, based on the experience that I have with looking at vibration and resonance in these smaller five inch drones, is there anything more that could be done to improve the performance of the Sicario over and above just adding these arm braces? And to try and show how we can improve the performance even further, I've got a little bit of a different type of plot here. Rather than looking at the displacement of the arms, we're now actually looking at the stress in the arm material itself. So if I play this video, you can see that as the arm vibrates in this resonant mode, you can see that there's quite a lot of stress developing in the arm just in that uh, bent section. And in this area here, you can really see that the material, the carbon fiber is working really hard. And that's where I think that there could be an improvement to the design. You can see that there are lots of these holes that have been cut into the arm. And these are there to try and reduce the overall weight of the drone. But in this area where the arm is experiencing quite a lot of stress in this vibrational mode, we could improve the performance, the vibrational performance of the drone a lot by removing the holes that have been drilled here. It will make the drone slightly heavier, but the added stiffness of the extra carbon fiber in that area will really help improve the vibration performance by increasing the frequency of the vibrational mode and therefore making it easier to filter and also reducing the amplitude of the vibrational mode for the same amount of vibrational energy that's input by the motors. So the first thing to try is to remove these holes and avoid weakening the arm in the most critical, most stressed location for this vibrational mode. But that's not the only thing that we can try. The nature of carbon fiber is that it's an anisotropic material which means that its strength and stiffness is really dependent on the direction in which you load it. And what we can see from this mode is that the axis of torsion that's really critical is in the vertical direction. So we need to maximize the torsional stiffness of the arm in that direction so that it's most able to resist that load. And in order to maximize that torsional stiffness in a particular direction, we need to consider the carbon fiber layup direction of the arm, the anisotropy of the carbon fiber material itself. So currently, the way the arm is cut, the 090 layup of the carbon fiber is orientated vertically, which means that we have half the carbon fibers in this vertical direction and half the carbon fibers in this horizontal direction. And it turns out that when you orientate the carbon fibers in this way, you get the maximum torsional stiffness at 45 degrees to the directions of the two fibers. And I've shown that here with this blue dotted line. If we instead changed the 
orientation of the carbon fibers to be at 45 degrees, then that would provide a significant improvement in the torsional stiffness in the vertical axis. And this is not free performance improvement, because although we're going to improve the torsional stiffness on this axis, we're going to do it at the expense of reducing stiffness in other directions. So there's a risk here that while we may improve the resonant mode that we're specifically targeting, we might end up shooting ourselves in the foot and making other things much, much worse. And so we need to do experimental testing of this to see if there is an overall benefit to changing the carbon fiber orientation. But how much improvement does the simulation predict that we can get by making these changes? So if we start with the initial configuration, which was holes in the arm with no arm braces, we can see that we get a resonant frequency of that mode that we're particularly concerned about at 73.6 Hertz. Adding arm braces improves the situation to 78.2 Hertz. So we get about a 6.3% improvement in stiffness, which is, you know, it's okay. That will definitely help. However, if we go back to no arm braces and instead of adding arm braces, we remove the holes in the arm, we can see we can get a much bigger improvement. We can get a 16% uplift in the stiffness of the arm by removing those holes. So it's much more effective than adding the arm braces. And if we do both, if we remove the holes and add the arm braces, we can get a nearly 20% improvement in stiffness, which should really make a huge difference when trying to tune the drone. But what if we look at the carbon fiber alignment? So, this is looking at no holes with arm braces. So that's the best possible configuration. If we stick with the vertical carbon fiber alignment, that gives us no improvement. But if we switch to a 45 degree fiber alignment, we could be looking at up to 11% improvement in the torsional stiffness on that fundamental mode at the cost of negatively affecting the other modes. And so we will need to do testing here to determine if there is an overall benefit to changing the carbon fiber orientation. But it does look promising. It looks like we might be able to get even another 11%, which would bring our total uplift to more than 30%. So where do we go from here? Well, Alex at Design Tune Operate will actually be testing these recommendations that I've made on his Sicario. So he's gonna be trying some arms with no holes and he's going to be trying some arms with the carbon fiber oriented at 45 degrees rather than zero and 90. So we'll see if the improvements that have been predicted by the simulation turn out to be validated in real world testing. I'll post a follow up video when I have the results of that. So make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss it. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very happy flying.